What's up? Husto7 and today I've got a video showing off the key dominator software for your bloody gaming keyboards. The one I'm using is the B Light Strike 720 keyboard, uh, but it will work with all of the bloody keyboards. This is a video playlist, so you can actually find links in the description for the other parts. Uh, I just covered part one, how to get the software installed and some of the basic features of the keyboard. And now here in part two, I'm going to show you how to bind and unbind keys and what the features you can do when you do those bindings. Uh, so watch the other parts of the video. There are links in the description if you need to get caught up. And uh, thanks a lot for sticking around if you've been here from part one. So pull up the Bloody Key Dominator software, and if you click on button, uh, your screen should look something like this. Uh, I'm going to first talk briefly about the profiles and then get into actually how you can bind keys. So you can see here that there are three profiles. They come just called Standard and Gaming 2 and Gaming 3. We'll actually rename them here in just a second. And then you can also see that you can configure your switcher mode. So uh, click Manage Profile. And here we can actually rename our profiles. We can enable or disable them. Maybe you only want two profiles. Maybe you want three. Um, you can't obviously uh, disable the standard profile because that will be the default. Um, you can adjust the color and you can adjust uh, this up at the top, which is the switcher mode. So the switcher mode is actually how you change like I showed you in the last video, holding function and doing left and right on the arrow keys is the default way to switch. We're going to put it actually to working application. And the reason why is because this is going to allow us to automatically switch when we pull up a specific application. So we'll actually set this to called um, coding. And we will bind coding to open when we open up Microsoft Word. Now, maybe you want to bind that to something else, Notepad++, whatever you want. Uh, but we'll set that, and now we'll actually call this editing. And we will bind this to Photoshop. So now, our profile, rather than use function and the arrow keys, will actually switch automatically when we open up these various applications. When we're not running Photoshop or Word, it'll actually just be on the uh, standard profile. So we're going to click OK and save those settings. And uh, now you can see that we're operating here in standard. And so if we want to switch key bindings for editing, you know, let's uh, turn these key bindings off just to show you. And when we click apply, you'll see that the changes we made did not happen in standard. So all of your profiles are different. So you can have a whole set of key bindings that are default, a whole set, you know, for when you're gaming, a whole set for when you're coding, a whole set for whatever applications that you want. So um, here you can see the keyboard layout. Um, the five keys are bound initially, and they're just bound to their own keys. So nothing actually is um, done. So we're just going to unbind these just by clicking on them. So a red key means that it has a specific key binding. If it's gray like this, it just means it's the standard default key binding. So let's take you through uh, some key binding. So when you click on a key, we'll bind F5 here. You just click on it, it will light up, and now you can actually choose this drop down to select what you want to bind it to. You can actually unbind it by clicking no setting. Um, I talked in the last video about how to turn on game mode by doing function F8. Here's another little tip. You can actually go to your window key. If you don't use it, click no setting, apply. And now this key, regardless of whether or not you're in game mode, is permanently unbound. So you never have to worry about bumping it when you're in game. Uh, we'll also go through some of these other key bindings here. You can also bind it to another um, key on the keyboard. Now, there are certain circumstances when you would want to do this. Um, there are some, in, including there are sometimes out there people have limited mobility or disabilities, and this can actually come in handy. Uh, if it's you know hard to hold shift to get capitals or something, you can just bind keys to all capitals. Um, but you know that's there's not necessarily many circumstances where you would want to bind another key uh, you know, a key press to another key, and I'll show you some uh, different ways you can do that. You can also bind key uh, strokes here to any mouse clicks, so you can bind the, any of the mouse clicks as well as the uh, scroll up and down, which is uh, a pretty cool feature. Um, if you want to, I'll show you how you can use that to do things like auto move in Diablo, so that'll be in the next video, but uh, here you can actually bind things to mouse clicks. They call um, this part the office hotkeys, but it's basically just your standard you know, Windows operating system. You've got your cut, copy, paste, print, bind, all of those that you would typically do by you know, doing control F, control S. You can actually bind to a single click. So if we bind um, control C to F5, all you do is push F5 and you'll copy. And we could actually bind F6 to paste. And now you can copy paste very easily with one key click. Uh, let's keep going with some of the bindings here. You can also do multimedia, and this is very helpful. Um, I love to bind mute, 
you know, because I listen to music when I'm working, and if I get a phone call, I can very easily just mute my screen, and then I can resume uh, my music once the phone call is over. So multimedia bindings are very helpful. And then uh, the last two options is you can actually bind to a custom macro, which I'll show you in a later video how to create, and a custom combo file, which again I will show you in the next video how to create. Um, so this is important because in the next video I'm going to be taking you through how to use the super combo and uh, we'll want to make sure we know how to bind this. So you go to uh, your combo and then now you can bind one of your created combo or there's some default. You can see these are the ones that come default to test. So you can actually bind any of these um, by clicking on combo and that's how you bind those keys. So there you have it. That's part two for this video. This is how you bind and unbind keys using any of your bloody gaming keyboards. Uh, stick around here for part three if you want to see how to use the super combo and how that can give you a competitive edge uh, or increased productivity, whether you're doing gaming or working. Uh, and uh, be sure to check out all of the rest of the videos um, as I'll show you how to create some macros and take advantage of your keyboard uh, with some pretty awesome features. Uh, so if you learned something, click like, and uh, I'll have part three here for you shortly uh, if you're sticking around. Thanks a lot for watching.